Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm here with Simon Roach to do our first of many videos from the League of Ireland this season, and this is a bit of a preview show just to get everyone kind of in the mood. Get everyone warmed up. The big, the big day on Friday. Now, Are you looking forward to it yourself? Big kick off. This is it. This is uh, looking forward to this now. I want everybody back. This is actually the bit of the season where you can allow yourself to dream. You know, you can be like the early really, optimism. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The unrealistic optimism. That's it, and then you know you can really allow yourself, allow your mind run away before the harsh reality of the situation comes crashing down when you realise how poor your football team After actually about is. Games. About three games in, you realise none of that's happening. We're back to the same old stuff, but uh, yeah, at this time, as you say, all the optimism is there. Yeah. Now we've uh, we've done out a few some uh, some notes, and uh, we're going to go through the teams alphabetically. I'm going to start off kind of with Bows. Now, obviously, they have a huge game against Rovers on Friday night, which yeah. uh, myself and Johnny would be at, actually. So, if you do see us there, give us a show. Um, yeah, so just some of the players they got in. They've got Carl Moore, Keith Buckley, Ryan Swan, Kevin Devaney, JJ Looney. Yeah, got it. picked him up from us. Picked up JJ from ourselves. Good young player. Um, but I think, like, if I was looking at Bowes, I'd be looking at some of the losses there. Some of the players have gone out the door. Like, Akin Addy is going to be a massive loss there. He's, like, obviously one of the, the top strikers in the yeah, league. Yeah, he's obviously gone off to, to Waterford for the full-time football now. So. Yeah, that's the thing. He's going to be a big addition to them. Um, I think he's going to be a big loss for Bowes. Uh, and obviously, like, Sula as well, like, uh, making the move across the water, yeah, too. Like he's, he was a little powerhouse in the midfield for them um, over over the last year. He was another one, actually. It was a Tula Pat set. Youth system that we let get away, but um, yeah, he's friends with Luke Nolan actually, who we had on a few times. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's a cracking little player, and he's got on the balls now, too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think, like, to be to be fair, like, just being a senior player, is he? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what it is. Yeah, I think balls have been punching above their weight. Uh, like, they like they did like, um, they did fantastically well for what they had last season. Um, the resources weren't like like fantastic, um, in terms of. You know, the, like the, the 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 kind of money they have, I suppose, the yeah. number of players, the size of the squad, but played like fairly decent football, got some really good results, um, and actually like a good, very kind of comfortable um, finish. Like I think, with three teams going down last year, like they, a lot of people would have been tipping balls to be down yeah. near the bottom. They, like they actually, they totally exceeded. I think most people's expectations. Yeah, Shane, pretty well. we had Shane, and he was saying that you know he probably overachieved rather yeah. than anything else. Yeah. And then obviously. Then he'd be looking to aim towards the, the top end as well. Yeah, that's <laughs> the league, league of Ireland. Mary got around. <laughs> just have, just have the, that's it. A list of them there. Yeah. But uh, now he'd be aiming to, to, you know, do but maybe even do one better than last year and, and finish even higher in the, in the goal scoring chart. He's like he he was excellent for them last year. Yeah, like he was a real handful up front. Um, I don't see them doing as well this year as they did last year. I think um, the losses. Of the I think the losses to the players. Yeah, I think like like in fairness and like like credit to them. Uh, last year they were fantastic, um, but I, I just think I think like that they've lost some real quality there. And um, looked at some of the players coming in, um, you know, like there there is like there's still the, the makings of a decent squad there. I don't see them being troubled with relegation. I don't see that being an issue yeah, for them. Maybe but, mid table. Yeah, I don't see them pushing for. I was going to ask your prediction, but I was thinking around the same kind of thing. Yeah, low, lower half. Um, I think I don't, like I don't see them. I don't see them having to sweat too much. Relegation wise, with only one team going down automatically this year, and yeah. um, the other one obviously in the playoff, I think they'll be all right. But I think probably a season of consolidation rather than them really kicking on this year. Yeah, I'd say so too. I just hope because uh, for the lads' sake, because they've been nice with me and stuff like that. I hope, <laughs> I hope they do well. So oh, you're easily swayed. Go on, I, it. I, yeah, I, I yeah, hope yeah. they compete for a European spot. They yeah. probably won't, but I hope right. they do. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> but we've got the Bray then, so yeah. Yeah, I think more so with Bray, having players in, like there's there's obviously they've they've got players in there, but it was more just getting the club Yeah, back getting a license basically. Get, getting themselves sorted. Like there's a it's look i actually I think Bray could be in big, big trouble this year. Um you look ahead of season kind of fell apart from last year. They were doing mad stuff, offering big contracts to, to players, you know, two year deals. Um, you know, like big money was being reported for these lads, and then like halfway through the season, I mean, we're scratching our heads wondering, you know, are they even going to survive? Yeah, and you know, didn't make the announcement at half time in the game, like yeah, like, yeah, what a time to do that? Yeah, you know, and there's there's some funny stuff going on there where you know, like there's like a lot of people who would have been involved around the club who've been alienated, um, and kind of you know they're they're not working with the community anymore there, you know, yeah. like like they're. 
as I said, it's just it's there's a bad vibe going around there. Like they left it very late in this, like you know, in the season, sorry, in the preseason to actually get their business done signing players. Like it was looking pretty grim. I think they had five players signed up to what a month ago or something, yeah. you know, or something like that. Anyway, but they've done well then to keep McCabe and, and Green. Then yeah, they have. They've got so they have got some good bodies in. So that's the only thing I would have thought. Like number one, I was wondering, are they going to get their license? Are they going to be all right to, to, to kick on? They have. That's fine. Then they've actually, you know, I suppose they they, they have. Signed on some of, the, as you say, some of the better players there. So you know. Yeah, the thing is, if they get any injuries, they're fucked. Yeah, they're struggling. Like I think they're really going to struggle. And again, you know, they, they haven't got the the community behind them. But they, like, the attendances maybe haven't been great there for the last while. Anyway, they've got like a chairman who like his stated interest, the stated goal is to sell the ground yeah. and move them out. You know, like out beyond the motorway. It's a bit of a mess. Uh, I, I just, I, well, I, I well, fear for them. I okay, fear so you see them going down. I think I have, a, I have another tip for the for relegate. We'll get to them, but I think I think Bray are going to be down there. I think, uh, yeah, bottom two for me. Bottom two. Okay. Apologies, Bray fans, if yeah. there is any of these out there. Yeah, <laughs> if there's any, uh, go go to the Carlisle grounds if you're out there. Yeah, yeah that's go, it. Go see the lads. Connor Skelly, you're a new uh, Bray fan, so yeah, I mean, I would see you there anyway. Uh, yeah, so I would say. Hovering around the relegation zone as well. Yeah. Probably have to agree with you on that one. Um, Cork then. Cork after getting the Barry McNamee, Aaron Bray, Graham Cummins, Toby Adebayo, Rowland from Sligo. Yeah. Uh, Peter Cherry, Danny Kane, Colin Morgan, Josh O'Hannon. They're just uh, a few names. But yeah. the, the player, I think, from, from, um, from watching a bit last year and from the game at Order Park, Kieran Sadler, I think yeah. he is going to be... He's quality. I think he's going to be one of the best players in the league this year. I think if yeah. not the best. It was it was interesting because when he was with Sligo, like he, like it's funny being a League of Ireland fan. If you're going to watch your team most weeks with the kind of coverage the league gets, you don't get to see other players very often. You get to see them the two three times when they come and play your club. So, but every time I saw Sadler against uh, against Pats when he was with Sligo, I thought, look, he looked excellent. Great acceleration, great technique, turning on either foot, really good shot. That's um, what he did, literally the other day, uh, for the third goal against um, Dundalk. Uh, just literally turned bang and Rogers hadn't got a hope. It was just in before yeah. he even dived. Yeah, look, he's quality. And so I was, I was surprised. Look, he went to he went to Cork and I thought, look, this is this is a great move for him. He's going to a team that are you know that are going well, they're dominating. And he actually didn't he was in and out of the team, you know, like yeah, Dooley was keeping him out. And um, so yeah. Do, Dooley's yeah, moved, he's moved on. on now, isn't he? Up north. That's he's coming to Coleraine, I think. Um so it looks like he's he's got his place. Uh, it looks like it, the jersey's his, and I'd, I'd agree with you. I think he's got bags of talent. I think this could be a really big year for him. I think he, yeah. he's a real player. Like Cork, I, I think the goals are going to come from himself and Shepherd. Yeah, like like that's that's the thing. Like I know Cummins when he was there, you know, it's gone back obviously a few years. Yeah, but, he, was good for them, yeah. He, he scored like he, he scored a lot of goals uh, for, for Cork. You know, look. It'll, it'll, look, it'll be interesting to see. Like everybody knows what happened last year. They had the league wrapped up early. Yeah. Uh, and then it's, then they just kind of stopped scoring goals. Yeah, Shawnee Maguire leaving obviously hurt them so badly, and they looked, they looked poor. Like I, I didn't, I, I don't have it to hands, but as I remember, somebody showed me like a league table had it started. You know, would have heard of the games to to, leave, to go, and you know they were like way down, like you know towards the the like in the bottom half of the table towards the like you know where. Yeah, the, the yeah they were struggling to finish off games and stuff like that. But really watching bad. them the other day, you know, I mean, although you know, I was talking to Stephen Williams after the game, uh, their goalkeeping coach, Dundalk, yeah, and he was saying that there was a big flu epidemic going around the squad as well. Yeah, so there was, and Dame was saying as well, Dame Massey, that about five players were were Stream. out, were so essentially not making excuses for anyone. Cork know. were brilliant. Yeah. Cork yeah. second half, Cork were brilliant. Yeah. Um, you know, from all areas of the field, I mean, from their fullbacks like Stephen B, you know. They were brilliant. Yeah, just knocking the ball around. The pitch looked hard to play on because they they had so much like different weather. Like one minute it was sunny, the next minute it was snow, and it was it was yeah. they had all four seasons up there. Like it was bad. yeah, on a plastic pitch as well, like around an Astro, which which isn't yeah. The ball seemed to be slipping away from a lot of the players. Every time someone gives it from the defense to the midfield, it was like falling over and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to judge on, yeah. on that surface. Well, that's the thing. Like I I I still I have them in as my uh, as my tip to win the league. I think this year. I think like. I think Caulfield has them like improving. Like he's gone from, you know, he, he kind of came in. I, I, like I thought the football when he originally like came in, he had them solid, but like they were stodgy. They weren't great. They weren't easy on the eye, you know. And when you were comparing them with Dundalk with the kind of free flowing football that was like, you know, yeah. kind of they were playing some sexy stuff. And then you're looking at 
Cork and it's like oh Jesus you know as if you were looking at them from a neutral's perspective like you know yeah. as somebody you wouldn't like either of them um, you'd sort of say here you know at least Dundalk are playing a bit of ball yeah. I don't mind watching if said that on Sunday it would have been the other way around well that's that's the thing you know but I think I think they've kicked on I think he now has them solid but they're actually like they're they're better now as well like they're like they're they're a better side to watch oh, they um, would be breathing a lot of confidence now they're after winning the FAI Cup and then after winning the Presidents yeah. Cup and the league so yeah like like that's the thing I think um I think they have a good squad they've got like you know like a good manager who seems to be like improving them as well um they've made some decent signings they've lost a few you yeah. know like uh, who's gonna like I suppose replace Shawnee Maguire in terms of like I mean. Like he, he was on fire for the first half of last year obviously before he, he made his move so like that's like, that's going to hurt anybody in the league of Ireland like, he, yeah. was, he was kind of head and shoulders above anybody else um, like losing a player of his quality but uh, that's going to be the thing Can they like are they going to be able to replace him I think they're pretty strong like in every other area yeah. and as you say like, kind of, enough, I think yeah. Sadier is going to be I think he's going to be a big player too Yeah. so yeah I'd say like Cork Certainly going to be up there. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, I'd, I'd see them challenging definitely with Dundalk anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You see what you're thinking? You're fancying Dundalk, are you? I'm, I'm torn between the two. I can't. I couldn't make a prediction right now. Fair enough. All right. All right. Yeah. Otherwise, Sitting on the, the fence. Cork fans, Dundalk is chewing the head off me. Yeah, yeah that's right, that's so it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nail your colours to the mask. Go on, slide everybody. That's your best bet. On to Derry then. Um, how do you see them doing this this season? Um, Obviously, they had a, they got off to a flyer last year, and um, they were going so well. Obviously, the, the, the tragedy that kind of you know befell yeah, them, like losing their captain, you know, Ryan McBride, and that was like was, that had a, a big impact on them. Not just I don't think like from losing like, you know a top player, but a massive influence around the club, and it's obviously going to be it was very very difficult and emotionally very draining for them. I'd imagine very very tough to kind of move on. They handled it brilliantly in a very dignified manner, but it, it was difficult for them, and you know. They maybe kind of from getting off to a flying start, they maybe fell away a little bit, and that's perfectly understandable. But I think um, I think Derry will do all right this year. I think they'll be okay. Um, losing the likes of McNamee, who's uh, I mean, we were talking about Cork and where the goal is going to come from, and I mean, he's maybe not like going to be one who's going to be banging him in every week, but he's definitely a creative force. So yeah, I think he's that's brilliant against him. Yeah, well, he's going to be like he's going to be Cork's gain. He's going to be definitely you know Derry's loss. It seems um, to be like an, a continuous thing with. with uh, Team like with with Derry, mm. they seem to be just like losing all their t- their best players to top clubs all the time. Yeah, you know, it's, and it's hard. It's hard to kind of keep going and, and replacing them. Like, I think Kenny Shields has done a pretty good job there, um, get, getting the most out of the group of players he has. Um, I think also they're going to be moving back into the, the Brandywell. Looks like they've done a decent job there too. Yeah. They're a little it's bit behind schedule. And stuff. Yeah, like that's that's it. The followers look good. I think they're they're gonna miss their target. They're not gonna be in for the first home game. I think it's been put back, but ultimately that's that's gonna be great. Like I don't think going to Bally Buffet was was suiting them, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously that that wasn't gonna be like a, a short, even like a, me, a medium term solution for them. So back in their you know their home ground is gonna be good for them. I can see them being like you know mid table. I think this year. I think anything above that. Anyway. I, I definitely staying up for me. Uh, I can see them towards the top half of the table I think things go really well for them they could potentially have a European push I think that would be the absolute height of their ambition I yeah. think more likely it's gonna, they're going to be settled somewhere around the kind of mid-table um, you know like they have a decent style of play like they're a team that I'd recommend you know like people going to have a look at you know if, they, if, if, yeah. if you're local but I don't see them they're, there, they're not going to be challengers anyway Is there anyone on the sirens that kind of makes you go oh you know uh, I'd have a look at Rory Hale, very talented young lad. Um, so he's one of two brothers. I think. I think uh, his brother Bro- Ronan. I think maybe yeah. would have signed for for Galway. Is that right? No, he's only, he's on a loan from as well. Is all right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So he's um, so he's back from. I think he's he's with Villa or Birmingham. I think it's one of the one of the, the Birmingham base yeah. clubs. And he's over on loan, but I believe he's he's a young lad. He's, so he uh, was he was with Galway. Yeah, you, that that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. That's uh, what the confusion is. That's what it is. Yeah, but um, but look, they're they're supposed to be. Like fairly highly rated. Uh, Gavin Pears was with Pats last year. Didn't really work out for him, to be honest. He's a very good player, good solid centre half. But like Pats wants to play ball, they want to like, yeah, yeah, pass like, out. Speaking with with Darius, they, if you don't suit Buckley's kind of style of play, you're... yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. He wants like he wants ball playing defenders. Yeah. Uh, like Lee Desmond would be a perfect example of that. But um, like that's that's not really Gavin Pearce to that extent I don't think he's he's more blood and guts um, so you know you get his head on anything um, great at getting blocks in clearances in but not really as comfortable with the ball as feet but you know he might be able to do do a decent job up there um, 
as I said, Derry, I think mid table this year, mid table yeah. for them. Yeah, I'd probably go for the same and just, you know, not get relegated. I think yeah. they'd be happy enough. Yeah, yeah, that's it. First season back in the in the new home, you know, yeah. and that's it, nice and comfortable. Take yeah, the last time he wants to go down after that. Like. No, 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 I don't see it either. I think that'd be safe enough this yeah. year. Uh, right, on to uh, Dundalk, come on the town. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously losing McElhenney and McMillan is a big blow. Best players every year. That's it. Like you know, you're like, how does Stephen Kenny do it every single year? You know, your top stars getting like heart getting ripped out of your team, and you have to keep coming back, and it's happened again, and not getting a fee for the lads. You know. Yeah, which is, you wish like some like the authorities could do something about that. You yeah. know, extend contracts for a little bit, so they get even a couple of grand or something. Get something, yeah. Like some some of the fees I've heard touted around for for lads who um you know who who have gone across the water like Chris Forrester or whatever you know like some of the, and again it's all pub talk, but like pitiful stuff you know yeah. like really really pitiful stuff and undisclosed fees. Oh, and then it sticks in your stomach when you hear you know like your man Darren McAnthony, the Peterborough chairman, like a couple of months after Forrester gets over there and has a good game against Chelsea in the FA Cup and he's like, well I wouldn't sell him for three four million pounds, you know. And you're thinking, oh, he was the same player. Like two months ago, when he was at uh, Pats, and you know, yeah, like there's no fee there, there's there's nothing, and like the clubs are on their knees here financially. So I understand what you mean. It's just if you're a hot talent, if you're a young player, you're being widely touted around the league. You know why would you sign a two three year deal when you know there's English clubs knocking on your door? Yeah. And you take the one year deal and you know, and, and you know you're gonna get a bumper pay rise as well. Can't can't hold it against them, can you? True. Yeah. You know, like they are, they are after getting Ronald Murray and, and then they got I think it's I know his first name is Carlos and I think his second name is Chevy Dukas. Che Chev Dukas can't you're on Can your own there, Paul. You're what? on your own. I'm not can't help you there. Chev Dukas, is it? Yeah. I'm not sure he's a Lithuanian international, <laughs> but they're after signing him. <laughs> yeah, okay. His name's there, hang on, I'll find it. Um correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but uh it's somewhere there, hang on. Um yeah. Shveka Dukas. C H V E D U K A S. I'm friends with him on Facebook actually. You're friends with him on Facebook. I'll have to message him, how do you pronounce it? That's it, yeah. Get him on a video link up to pronounce his name. But um yeah, I couldn't tell you much about him to be perfectly honest. But well, he, all I know is he's a Lithuanian international, so yeah. he must be of somewhat. He must of have a pedigree. Name. Yeah. Decent enough anyway. Um yeah. and then Ronald Murray, I think he got two goals the other day. Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah, got him from Galway. So, yeah, yeah, he's he's a good player. And he's 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 going to be very useful for them. I think he'll he'll do well. Well, they they need someone in there to replace the goals for Macmillan, and if he can yeah. do it, happy days. Yeah, I mean, it was it, I think it was the defense that let him down in Galway last year. He he done his job at the other end, you know. Yeah, and no, I think he'll do well. I think he will do well. Um, you know, I'm having Pat Hoban there as well, back in the league. Um, well, it didn't really work out for him really in the UK uh, over the few years but look he's um, he, he should be a good solid addition like he knows he's good before he went and then he came back yeah that's it like he like he, he was excellent previously so like you know depends on what sort of condition he's in but he you know he, he certainly can be uh, he can be a big player for them but definitely like Ronan Murray you'd, you'd expect to be would expect to be a, a big player for them I don't um, I just don't I don't as I said I don't see it's so difficult for Dundalk again. It's another season trying to replace absolutely key players. You know. Do you think they're done with the transfer business though? Because they're obviously after getting the takeover and stuff like that. They, they still might f- uh, find someone to come in. I mean, they have a, uh, that former Liverpool player Adorjan. Yeah. And between him and um, Chivaka Dukas, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, but between the two of them, like they got rave reviews for the game against uh, Brentford. Yeah, like um, I mean, they they can do. Like I mean, if they've got if they've got money to spend on players, then then great. Like there's there's not much uh, hot talent left around the league that hasn't been signed up yet. Yeah. Um. You know. So there's no, like Gary McKay would have been a good signing for them. Yeah. That's yeah yeah. You, no point in talking about him now. He's yeah gone. yeah. He's gone to Bray. You know, so he signed there. So yeah. You know, like you wouldn't have, like there's other players though who like you know that they they had to say for example Dylan Conley like he is a, like he's a good player like Dylan Conley can bring a lot to Dundalk and it hasn't happened for him yet you know like he's been there um, and he just he hasn't been the player that, that he was and the player that maybe they expected to sign uh, but maybe just you know Stephen Kenny has like a, has a very he's got a system in place that maybe it takes a while to slot into you know yeah. and maybe uh, maybe it might happen for him this year like he's still a quality player you know um, yeah. very very quick uh, good technique but he just looked a little bit lost in the system, I think. Um, so you know, he could, he could well kick on. 
But I just think, as I said, what what would be your prediction? Then? Second. Second. I think I think I think it's going to be sec- they're going to have second place. I'm tipping Cork for first. I think they're Dundalk are going to finish second. Okay. You're going first, are you? Um, you're sitting on the fence. See, get, uh, get off the fence. Give us someone. I I I see. I like Dundalk a lot. You see, they kind of, they kind of be like my kind of second favourite team now gotcha yeah, yeah. I got shells and then you yeah. know so I want them to kind of do it because they're outside of Dublin you know so. yeah yeah Um, but then right I'll go for, I'll go for it on dock for the league right that's okay. me sorry Cork fans yeah but that's that, that's, that's what me. you're going for it. I have oh, to pick one I you've got to pick one yeah, yeah. so uh, <laughs> we'll move on down to, to Limerick then hasn't been a very good uh, win- winter for them very poor winter for them yeah it's uh, I'd be Albany, Albany, it was obviously a huge loss. Massive loss. He's a he's a big player. He's a good player. I can see him doing well. Um, he's gone to Brentford, isn't he? He has. He's gone to Brentford. Like he's again, he, he's not a lad that any any time I saw him against like Pats, he was he was very dangerous. I saw him on the telly, like very quick, very strong, good shot. Um, you know, really dangerous on the break. I think a lot of lads struggle. Um, like it takes them a little while to adapt. I suppose when they come from the, go from the League of Ireland across to the UK to kind of get up to speed with the physicality yeah. you know like you know full time training and like a very kind yeah. of professional setup. I don't think it's going to take him as, as long to get up to speed yeah he looks very physical yeah he is I think I think he should be okay um, he's a really good player but um, massive loss huge loss for Limerick and I mean all the signs coming out of there is that you know that like again like they haven't done a lot of business they've lost yeah, some, they lost their manager as well yeah they lost their manager was like, it the first day of preseason he left yeah you know like yeah like er, early doors yeah on so that's um, not ideal no and like so like oh, Benny's gone but they've also lost um what's his name uh Harry um oh sorry what is the lad's name who's gone uh, Bastian Harry is it oh he's uh, gone to Waterford yeah. gone to Waterford yeah a uh, very very good player in the centre of the park. Um, he, he was excellent for them as well great addition for, for Waterford but another loss for Limerick and they haven't really replaced these lads with you know, yeah. much quality you know, Barry Cotter I think has gone as well isn't he he need to get a move across the Ipswich or something like that yeah. so like and Mick um, McCarthy loves him yeah yeah you know like uh, yeah, he loves his Irish lads in fairness to him. but um, I look they're I think they're going to struggle. I think they're really going to struggle. Um, there seems to be a lot of discontent, uh, bad vibe around the club as well. I actually have them as my pick to go down. I think they're going to like they're the ones Me who too. are going to do Bray a favour. I think, and they're going to finish bottom of the league and uh, leave Bray in that uh, playoff place. That's what I think. I think they're uh, they're in big bother. Yeah, another loss from was obviously Dean Clark, and he's obviously just going to yeah, yourselves. Um, yeah. He would have brought obviously a lot of experience playing. He's played in a lot of clubs around the league now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, I suppose we might as well move on to Pats. Yeah. Um. Take like the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah. So. I'd be uh, delighted if I was you. Something I'm sorry, it's Serious players. It's look. It's a tight squad. Um. It's like. Uh, to be look, I'm cautious. Look, I'm very cautiously optimistic. I think we're we're definitely I've, like over the last few seasons, I felt there's been a bit of a slide around the club, a, bit, a little bit of lethargy. You know, like there hasn't mm. been like a lot of energy there. Um, Do you just, think that might be from having the same manager for so long? Like, there's it's, last season was the first time I'd heard kind of more than maybe like kind of whispers of discontent around the ground about kind of Liam Buckley, and that's what that's what is going to happen when your team is bottom of the league. You yeah. know, well, as we as Pats were for the first half of last season. Um, I'm like I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, he's won it all with Pats. He has us playing a great brand of football. You know, I think I think there's there's a lot to be said for it. I think maybe like there was there was budgetary constraints that were holding him back a little bit. Yeah. Um, it looked like Pats were gonna go down at the midway yeah, point yeah. of last that's, season. There was really the last ten, kind of ten games was a real revival. Well, that's that's the thing. Like they got um they opened up the, the kind of the purse strings, and I'm not having a go at, at Callagher here. He's pumped it. Gary Callagher's uh, pumped in a lot of his, his money to Pats, you know. Um, so Gary's not having a go. Yeah, not having a go there. But so like in fairness, you know, uh, like he's done his part, but like they, they obviously opened up the wallet and got um and got some like some experience in. Like uh, Buckley's done a great job bringing through like a lot of young players, um, and he kind of. I'm robbing one of Brian Kerr's points here, but um, he he had like he'd invested in the youth uh, from the early part of last season, and it, they didn't really deliver for him. Now, like there's yeah. a few players who, who you know you know have been excellent. Um, like I think Darren Markey's a really good player. Um, I've actually lost Rory Feely. I know JJ Lunny has gone and stuff, but effectively what the difference was is you, they went out and they got Owen Garvin, they got Jordy Balk, they got Killian Brennan. Yeah. You know these lads came in steady to shoot. the final show. Gillian is, is he? Yeah. yeah he's, a good, he's, he's a good lad. He's a good lad. Quality player. But um, 
Maybe see if you can get them two in the middle now to see. Well, that's the thing, you know, like, uh, like Garvin. And Giggles, Graham Kelly. Yeah, you know, he's a local lad around here, isn't he? Yeah, um, mate of mine as well. But he's, uh, you know, he was actually fantastic. Uh, he was, they swapped him from centre mid to right back last year, and he, he was great. He was a revelation, believe it or not, you know, yeah. because Michael Barker was struggling. Um, and I think he was getting targeted down that side. Uh, but uh, Graham Kelly, like, for a centre midfielder to slot in, um, he did he did really, really well. He's going to have a tough job in his hands now, uh, Simon keeping Madden. his place. Yeah, well, Simon Madden is going to slot in right full. He's he's an excellent right, like brilliant signing. Absolutely delighted yeah. with him. In fact, it's just probably a, a toss between him and John Gannon for the for the who's the best right back in yeah. the league. Well, like I mean, that's a fantastic signing because we have struggled with right back. Um, Jordy Balk is the one player, and we lost Cur- Curtis Byrne as well. But Jordy Balk is the one player that we didn't sign back. Who, um, you know, by his he he wanted to move on, unfortunately, but. Uh, who is a real loss? I think we got everybody else that, that we wanted to that look like, yeah. I would have wanted anyway. Um, so Kevin Toner coming in, hopefully he can do the biz. Like Bermo on the left is you know outstanding. Lee Desmond, excellent centre back. The only thing is I'd say just defensively, you know if there's injuries or suspensions, there's not a lot in yeah. the squad that I can see that can maybe step in there. I think we've strengthened in midfield as well. Doing we'll do as well. Doing it coming in, delighted with that as well. You know, I know a few of my Rovers mates were absolutely sick too. So yeah, well, he was tipped to go to, to Britain. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's, it's great. Like he's an inch car lad. Um, you know, like hopefully he'll suit. Trevor Clark, I think we'll miss him. Yeah, two, two pals. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. But like we we made some uh, some really really good and signings. Keegan then as well. Keegan coming in to help out and maybe lighten the load on uh, Fagan. You know, because Christie's he's a little bit injury prone. He has been um, over the last couple of years. Um, like when he's on form, he's as good as Anthony in the league. He's a class act. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm really optimistic for the first time in the last couple of years. You know, like as I said, I'm always a little. I would bit be like too. This. I would be too. In fairness, yeah. So some really like really good quality of stuff that coming in there. That's it. It just it just depends. To like, add to the likes of Gavin and, and, and Brandon and that now as well. That's the thing. That's the thing. And you know, it's going to be a really tough start. Like Cork at home on Friday night. We don't like we beat Cork when we needed it at the end of last season. Yeah. We needed a result, but like. You know, they were done like the, the league was won for them um, they weren't the same proposition as they were earlier in the season and prior to that they turned us over pretty much every time like they just kind of bullied us physically um, so this will be this will be an interesting benchmark Pats have had an absolutely fantastic pre-season like winning comfortably all their games beat some American crowd 12-0 12 nil. Yeah. yeah now I think Clark's been banging in a lot of goals in pre-season for as well he's been doing well yeah look it's, it's hard to know sure. like you know Fair play to him, yeah. Keep going, mate. Um, like it's hard, it's hard to know like what way it's uh, what way we're we're gonna line out. Like particularly, like there's a lot of choices to be made, particularly across the midfield. You know, like, yeah. there's a lot oh, of definitely there. now, yeah. So like that's fantastic. Um, so like from my perspective, I think anything. I would be very disappointed with anything below fifth place. This I was season. gonna say I could see them finishing fourth. Yeah, I think like fourth is absolutely there for the taking. I think. Um, and all going well, like there's no reason why there can't be a, like a European push, you know. For so, a cup run, a cup run, absolutely. You know, there's there's enough quality there. So uh, no, I'm delighted with uh, the, the bit of business pre season. The other side as well, it's just even around the club in general. There seems to be a bit of push. They've got like, the online shop sorted. You know, like, like just the marketing have been really poor. Um, like going, kind of going back over the last few seasons and again kind of the midway point of last year it just seems like that like the interest has picked up there that, yeah. like you know they got the fair, finger out lads they got the finger out fair play to them they have you know i know there's a lot of volunteers down there and stuff with thankless job yeah but um but really they is. have you know but they have but they they, they really so have stepped up their game manager that, that's the thing yeah that's the thing you know nobody notices the all the hard work you're doing but they are doing a, doing a, a much better job now i think things have kicked on there's a much better presence online um and i'm feeling i'm feeling pretty confident about yeah. it you know so top five finish Top five finish minimum is what I'm yeah. thinking, and yeah, certainly fair, kind of yeah. yeah, certainly on a crack at Europe. And that's not too optimistic. One. Like it's 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 realistic. Definitely, I think so. Yeah. I think anything less than that now would be uh, would be underachieving. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. That's Move, we're moving go over, kind of uh, to Tala then. Yeah. Um, they've got some some signings in now. Of Joey O'Brien probably did a big one that yeah. everyone's making a big fuss over. I'm not, I'm not entirely sold over because he's thirty one. Yeah. They kind of come over. How's his knees? You know, like, like we don't know what sort of condition he's in, really. You know, uh, not taking away from the fact that he obviously he played for Ireland and he's played in the Premier League. Yeah, you know, not taking that away from us. No, just, no. I just don't see what, what he's going to bring to the league. It just depends. Like, it's the same. And fair play, like to to Rovers in the sense that, like, there's 
why not sign him? You know, like, I mean, they're assembling True, yeah. in terms of the club infrastructure. They're getting a lot of experience around the ground. You're looking at some of the people who are involved between, like, you know, MacPhail, obviously Bradley, you know, Duff, you know, O'Brien. Mm. Like, he's not keen that Robbie Keane training with them and all for a while. Yeah, well. look, and he was, he was close to sign, I believe. Yeah, look, well, geez, that would have been, been some coup. But, you know, I think uh, that can't do any harm. You know, like, these, these are lads who have been involved at the top level recently. Um, and just Rovers obviously have plans improving their infrastructure. You know, they're, I know they're doing a lot, you know, with younger players in their academy and stuff like that. And having these, these lads involved is going to help that. What, they, what he's going to bring to the pitch, I don't know. I'm not sure. If mm. I was looking at, like, their really big signings, I think Greg right. Bulger. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, like, he's, we obviously know him from, you know, uh, in Chicor and Pats, he's part of our, you know, our league winning team. And, uh, He's excellent. He's excellent. And again, like being the way it is that I'd be watching like the Saints matches most weeks, uh, I'm surprised to hear that you know Conor McCormick seems to be maybe overshadowing him a little bit in, yeah. the, in the Cork City uh, team. Of yeah, you know, but like I, th- I think Bulger has a lot to offer. Um, the only thing is he he likes to tackle. He's 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 fond of a red card, and like discipline's been a big issue with Rovers over yeah. the last few years. So. I have to see how that all works out, but look, he's a, he's a great addition to the squad, and they have some really good talent there. You're looking at, you know, Clark, yeah, Clark Mille, um, you know, Graham Burke. Yeah. There's some there's some really good players floating around. Every time I think of Graham Burke, I think of that scream where he scored there. Yeah, you well, you know, the one I think that enough. Anyone who's watched him alone. Yeah, well, look, you know, stick it out link up is what you yeah, want to do there. There, there you go, way. innovator. You know, there you go. But they um, have you back. <laughs> yeah, but I'd say. Uh, like I said, he has that in the locker. He's a good player. The only thing, like I would say, this year, um, if I was kind of looking at the league overall, we've had the top two teams for the last few years. It's been Dundalk and Cork when way out in front. Yeah. Dundalk for the last couple of years before last season. I think Cork were just on their own last season. Though. That was it. Cork were on their own, um, particularly in the first half of the year. There's nothing near them. I think it's going to be much more compressed this year. Yeah. Um, I think with Dundalk losing the few. You know, obviously, I know they've made a few additions as well, but I think like that's maybe going to diminish their squad a little bit. Cork, you know, not having Shawnee Maguire, it's going to maybe just make, maybe bring them down a little peg or so. I think like the likes of Pats, Rovers, you know, even maybe, maybe Waterford. That's what I was thinking. Waterford, maybe Derry. You know, like yeah. I, think, I think it's just going to like I, I still think the top two are going to be the top two, but yeah. I think like third and fourth. But it won't be as, as distant. Way out in front. Yeah. I, think, I think it's going to be a little bit more compressed. The only place that kind of really didn't strength too much. Probably be goalkeeper, yeah, or right back. Yeah, like they, 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 they've they've they brought in, they brought in right yeah. backs, but they're not up to the kind of no quality of Madden. You know? No, I was absolutely delighted to get Madden. Um, you know, well, it's that was all the messing about trying to get Gannon, and then made him yeah go. <laughs> yeah, fair play to him. Thanks. Yeah. So fair play to Gannon. Fair play to <laughs> Rovers. <laughs> fair play to everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> delighted. Delighted. The Rovers fans just snapping. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it. And look, if if you the Rovers lads would now were, you know, so yeah. it was, uh, it was, no, it was great. But um, from their perspective, I think I third. Think, yeah, if you're looking at third or fourth, third. I'd love. I'd, lo- I'd love to be in that. Unless you're a Rovers fan, you probably tell us otherwise, which you can tell us in the comments. Yeah, yeah, of course. I would be running away with the league. I'd be saying, but um, yeah, I think um, I know. I think third. That's place. the optimism. The early optimism. The early optimism. That's it. Yeah. So no, I think third place would be would be a fair return for them. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Right, so uh, the last two teams and uh, Sligo Rovers. How do you see them do? They're, they're actually at the. Um, they got Morgan in, who seems to be like everyone raving about him. Johnny, who's who, who you'll kind of get to know a bit more on the show throughout the season, but yeah, he's a big Liverpool fan and he's raving about this kid uh, Morgan. Yeah, well, well, he's come. He's got serious pedigree, but it hasn't worked out for him so far. You know, wherever yeah. he's, he's been. Well, I wouldn't be raving about him because you know if he's coming back, he's obviously not done something. There's something not clicking there, but hopefully, if he, he can come in, yeah, and do a job for him. Yeah, well, that, like that's that's the thing. Like he was, he was prolific with Liverpool's U teams, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Who I think it was Fowler. It was a Fowler said he was one of the most pro- prolific scorers. Yeah, I think I think it was. I think you're right. Um, could be wrong. I could be wrong. Absolutely, um, complete right. Jonah. Put the complete kiss of death on him. Uh, give, giving him that title. <laughs> he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of that, all the players. Yeah. yeah God. Yeah. That's it. God's after yeah, cursing him, but. Um, yeah, look, I, I, look, you know, they're pinning a lot of hopes on, on, on him. Like Sligo are another team for me that I think are gonna are gonna struggle this year. Um, tough year last year for them. Um, yeah. Don't see like any massive improvements in terms of some of the some of the lads that they brought in. Like obviously, like Morgan's one to watch for sure. Um, the other lad, like P- Pincelli, 
Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. He's, like, he's, he's 34. Right, okay. Well, you know, your man Tossi for uh, for Limerick last year, yeah, uh, Rodrigo, it was actually a very good sign and stuff. Yeah. You know, he was around the same He's age, played a few, a few leagues, you know, he's played around Colombia and all these mad places. But yeah, well, so look. So did Eamon Zayed. Well, there you go, yeah, yeah, well, that's it. So, like, well, look, hopefully for, for them, he's more than, you know, a journeyman and he comes in and does a, does a job for them. Yeah. But I don't, I don't have much hope for them, to be honest. Uh, of staying up? I think... They will, given the way it's structured this year, I think they're just about going to be all right, but I see them being in the relegation fight. So okay. for me, my so injuries three, will be. Oh, yeah, look, like, they're. Suspensions. They, yeah, injuries and suspensions could hurt them. I, just, I don't think that, like, the, the squad. You know, I, I, I just. I don't. And they struggled last year. I'm looking at what's come in. They're pinning an awful lot of hopes on, on your man, Adam Morgan. Um, as I said, I don't know Pinselli, that. Pinselli, don't know a whole heap about him. We'll see how they get on. I see them being like kind of down towards the bottom. I, I'd have them as the, my third last team. I see them finishing eighth. I think okay. uh, I'm saying Limerick last. I'm saying Bray second last. I'm saying Sly got down there, and I think like they're gonna have a battle. That's uh, I, I don't I don't see them even troubling the middle of the table to be honest. Oh, with Sly got fans, if if you feel like we're wrong, you know, let us know. Uh, don't be we're afraid. not. You're in trouble. <laughs> Um, they're on to Waterford they're the last team who I think are going to have a fantastic season yeah I thought they um, besides maybe the defence I thought they've, they've bought pretty well yeah they have Like and, and even like the season before um, no offence David Webster I think no offence <laughs> besides him they haven't really strengthened yeah Dave he's after having a pop at you there Dave um, but uh, <laughs> nah he's um, that back ball is on the way <laughs> But that's it. But even like the season before, kind of you know they laid out their ambitions. You know, signed the likes of Kenny Brown, excellent player. Um, you know, I, I always liked him at Pats, um, big and strong. Looks like he can't move, but he can actually shift. You know, he looks like yeah. he's, he's a heavy boy. Um, he he now his way to the, the local takeaway. But look, I think he's uh, <laughs> he's actually uh, the Leo Vu like in the I think so. Yeah, but now he is. Like, he can actually he can move, and he's a he's a very good player. Very very good. Uh, and they've added to him uh, this year. I think like the, the standout sign has got to be you know Akinadi for me. I think he's going to be he's going to be a big player for them. I also the lad I was talking about, uh, Harry from if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I hope I am. Um, the the lad. Oh, Harry's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's his French cousin. No, um, it's, it's like Heiji or Y. So yeah, that's a Bastian Harry. Uh, I think that's what it is. But uh, but he's always been, he's been very impressive. Webster, let us know. Let us know. Get in touch, Webster. But um, yeah, I think they're 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 going to be very big additions for them you know I think um, not Niall Corp as well go. yeah yeah look I mean they've, they've got look, they've got the basis of a very good squad there they seem to be there's investment in the club um, looks like there might be a little bit of a buzz around there like Waterford was always a, a big football town great yeah. to have them back in the Premier you know I think that's where Daryl Murphy started out wasn't it yeah that's right he was, he's, he's a Waterford man and uh, won the league and then for the first division and then shipped out and then over he went like, so you know I think uh, I think it, like, it bodes really well for them to be honest I think it's good for I everyone I like them I, I'm friendly with a couple of our players too so I'd like to see them do well that's it well I mean the setup seems to be there so your man um, Power is it Lee Power is it is that mm, the lad yeah, ex-international so he's throwing a few quid into them Paddy so. Power's cousin Paddy Power <laughs> then they've got uh, everyone's everyone's cousin everyone's that's it that's, that's all of you There's, um, and obviously having uh, Pat Fenlon on board there too yeah like, see, yeah. yeah like it's great to have somebody with that sort of experience like how many titles has he got under his belt um, so having him involved oh, he's um, like the director of football yeah like that's that's great to have you know um, some, somebody along those lines in there that sort of experience so I think uh, I think they're going to be they're going to do well I, I, like they could they're, they're a top five team potentially as well um, you know if you're, if you're looking at teams who should be like pushing like, look, might be maybe a bit overly optimistic for a team that's just coming up to, talk, to have European ambitions, but I think they could be the surprise package this year. You know, I think yeah. they, they could really push. I, think I was thinking the top five finish myself. I could I couldn't distinguish where. Yeah. In the top five, it'll depend again, injuries, suspensions, so yeah. on. That's it. They get a run together. They get it off to a good start, and you could like they you know you could see them getting you know put the troubling. Top four potentially. Yeah, I like Warford as well. The, the, the numbers they, they travel in numbers. And like I was at a game against Cavendish last last year, and there's Division One. They packed out the ground, like yeah. In fairness to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's good. You know, as I said, it's good to have like a, another kind of region um, represented in the yeah. Premier too. So uh, yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. I think I think uh, I think they're going to be a good addition. Seem to like from like the coverage of the first division is 
pretty brutal let's be honest yeah. you know in terms of what you're seeing so I'm basing my knowledge on uh, how they play on some fairly limited clips I've seen yeah. um, but so at the same time they'll have to add in players so they'll probably play different this season you know yeah, as yeah. well but I, I, I know what you mean it's hard to see when it's when it's not shown so get the finger out RTE or whatever well that's the thing and like maybe it's maybe it's a separate topic uh, but just in terms of the coverage you know the likes of Soccer Republic I mean the actual the analysis isn't bad the punditry is not bad but like trying to squeeze everything into a slot that's you know an hour long like the graveyard shift was it Tuesday night at like 11 o'clock or something yeah, you know I think they've um, changed it well I hope they have you know and like it's it's just it's not conducive it's not it's not conducive to promoting the league at all. It's just, it's like, we're trying to attract new followers. We're trying to get people, you know, to, to come through the turnstiles, through the gates. And, you know, that's that's just, that's yeah, not having an RTE player really isn't enough. It's not enough. No, it's definitely not enough. Like, you need, like, like you need the marketing to be right. You need, like, and it's glossily produced. It's decent, you know, like, once, yeah. once it's there. But the clips of the games, you know, you're getting just, like, all right camera footage, you know, sometimes sometimes the angles aren't so great you know and it's 10 seconds 20 seconds of a game like how can you tell you know yeah, how can you really like, talk about it so much you know unless you have people that were at the game that, that's the thing you know so i don't you know maybe they, they point and sort of say that the, the viewership isn't there maybe that's why it hasn't got the 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 prime time slot but it's chicken and egg stuff yeah. you know you got to promote it first and then the viewership will come yeah sure so look at dancing in the stars look at that and that's look at that rubbish i'm not getting those people through so that's it yeah um, so look, I suppose it's hard. I suppose my point there is that it's it's hard to know, you know, what exactly to expect from any team coming up from the first division based on the coverage we get of them. But like, I would have high hopes for for Waterford. Okay. Well, uh, thanks very much for coming on, Tom. Pleasure. Uh, that's been our let's call it, call it League of Ireland preview show, I suppose. Episode one, though, for uh, the League of Ireland, something to get you in the mood. Um, tell us what you think in the to- in the comments. Um, if you'd like to come in on the couch. Throughout the season, get in touch, let us know, come in, if you think uh, Simon's wrong about, who's the team you're giving stick to? Giving stick to a good few of them, so who do I give stick to? Bray, Bray, Bray got a lot of Limerick. stick, Limerick's after getting a bit of stick, Sligo, yeah, I'm so. giving you a bit of grief as well. So if you're a fan of the, the bit of red or or, uh, or Bray or that, uh, come on in and uh, yeah, have a bit of a laugh and uh, talk about the league. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV, don't forget to like and subscribe, love you guys, have a great week, enjoy Friday night.